Hello, my name is Sudhi Solomon Shwao. I'm a master student at the Egypt Japan University of Science and Technology. And this video is my submission for the 2023 Simulink Challenge. So prosthetic devices without any form of feedback are difficult to control well, and this results in high abandonment of these devices. And uh, research has shown that simple forms of non-invasive feedback can greatly improve the control. Now, in our own experience working with prosthetic hands, we have noticed that there is the potential to feedback the current grasp type in the prosthetic hand. Now, what this will do is it will allow the user to know how an object is being grasped without needing to look at it. With conventional control, the number of grasps that a user can access at one time is greatly limited. And to obtain more grasps, uh, the user has to reconfigure the hand, which will be burdensome in a daily life activities. Now, current prosthetic hands have adaptive modes where we can, uh, where they can achieve multiple grasps with the same instruction, and this creates a new problem of how to know which grasp is being used without relying on visual feedback. So, the solution that we are proposing is to use tactile sensors on the placed on the thumb, index finger, and middle finger to predict the, the current grasp using an LSTM network, and then we generate unique stimulation patterns for each grasp. And then we display this to the user using a multi-channel haptic feedback device. So for this work, this is the feedback device that we're using. And we invite you to read uh, the paper linked in the description for more details on this device. So this uh, diagram shows the uh, B-Bionic end that we're using and the uh, sensors. And we use the myelectric electrodes to switch between the different grasps. And we use an Arduino Uno to collect the uh, sensor readings. And this is the setup that we use for data collection, where we perform multiple uh, grasping experiments and we log the data from each experiment using Simulink and we save it as a structure with time at a sample rate of 0 0.05 seconds. And uh, each experiment will produce, uh, will produce a large number of uh, grasp attempts as shown below uh, in this figure. Each peak represents a single grasp attempt. Once we've collected the data, the next stage is now to split and label the data. And uh, once we did that, we obtained 1,596 individual and labeled examples. And we used 70% of the data for training. And the remaining 30%, we keep it for uh, testing the network once it's trained. We also collected uh, 300 examples from a human hand to test the train network on completely new data. And we also included failed examples so which we expect will occur during uh, daily use with the prosthetic hand. Now, the structure of the LSTM network is as shown here. And uh, once we uh, trained the network, we used a five-fold cross-validation method. And the average accuracy was 88.68% on the B-Bionic hand uh, samples. And on the human hand samples, we had 86.44% uh, prediction accuracy. Now, with the network train, the next stage is to deploy the train network using real-time input, and we produce a real-time output to the to an Adams model of the haptic feedback device. So this is the structure of the Simulink uh, of the Simulink model that we're using. We have an input block to collect the sensor readings. We have a MATLAB function which will determine if a new grasp is initiated. If the answer is yes, then the sensor readings are sent to the LSTM network to produce a prediction. If the answer is no, then we ignore the uh, prediction of the LSTM network and we maintain the current output. And the LSTM network itself is making continuous predictions, which uh, once we have uh, a confident prediction, we produce a stimulation mode using this MATLAB function, and then we send it to an Adams model of the haptic unband. So here I will now run uh, I will now run the, a, a Simulink model so we can see. So once we start the simulation, it will load up the Adams model. And once the model is loaded up, the simulation begins. And here we can see that even though we are already making a prediction, there is no output yet to the Adams model. This is because we have not yet initiated a grasp. 
So once we initiate a grasp, uh, here I will initiate the pinch grasp. We see that a prediction is made uh, and it correctly predicted the grasp and then the output is sent to the Adams model. Another form of, uh, of simulation that we did with Simulink is to use the uh, same setup I showed before but without the Adams model and in this case we can directly view the outputs and we perform uh, multiple grasps and one important uh, thing to note is we are constantly logging the, it's the signals from both the inputs and the outputs and this will allows us to rerun the experiments at a later stage or to use the exact same input with uh, multiple trained networks with different ways to directly compare the performance for example here we use a pre-recorded input and we are checking to see how quickly the network is able to make a prediction.